Hello, welcome to Tyson and Teddy Talk. This is technically, officially, episode one. We uh, did, like, uh, a little test episode that is out there. But now we're here, we're hanging out. It's a Saturday. You know what I mean? Phantom Menace. This is just a show where we're chilling. What? (laughs) You said episode one. The Phantom Menace. (laughs) I was like, what did he latch on to that that (laughs) went to Phantom Menace? Oh, my God. Yeah, so this is a show where we're we're just chilling and we're talking about we're talking about shit. We're talking about the Game Awards this week because I'm really excited about that. Have you did you watch that trailer? Oh yeah. That Jeff Keighley put out. So good. It's so good. I love that shit so much. It's awesome. Uh, but yeah, we're just hanging. I think I got no. back into Legends of Runeterra last nice. night and today. Fucking great game. Just throwing that out there. Everyone needs to play it. It's so good, and I've missed it so much. Is that a MOBA? I just played. No, it's a, it's a, it's the card game. A card it's game. The okay. league, like, um, lore universe card game. But oh, like, yeah. when I just played two games, I played a lot of it earlier this year when I was doing like morning streams when quarantine first started. I would play like an hour of that, and then like two hours of something else or, or something. I did it like every day, so I played the mm. game every day. And it was so fucking fun. It's so good. I just played two games just now. I lost my first one to this deck that I was like, I, whew, this is a rough one. Like, oh, I need to figure out how to deal with that. Uh, but then the next one was, um, cause they added in, they add in regions every now and then, mm-hmm. and they added in a whole new region, which is like a set of cards. And I had not seen any of them whatsoever. So I was like. This should be interesting. And then we went in, and they were almost like, they legitimately almost have me. I gave them the emote that's like the good game kind of emote a couple of times because I was like, this is done. There's, there's no way I win this. But you don't don't ever surrender in that game because anything can <laughs> never happen. Never give up. And you could have one <laughs> good surrender. turn, and it's done. Never give up. Never <laughs> surrender. Never back down. Never quit, you know? And one good turn, it was done. I was like, oh, my God, am I about to win? I, I just won. <laughs> I was it's like so the que- it's like chess, like so the happy. Queen's Gambit. Yeah, dude. I need Good. to. I I haven't watched it. Great show. One of probably one of my favorites this year. Only eight episodes, so that's perfect. Like nice and short. No, no season two. It's just done. It's great. Oh wow! I literally haven't watched like anything in the last two weeks other than keeping up with Mandalorian. I watched, uh, I haven't like watched anything. I think I've watched like three seasons of Dexter in the last like week. Damn. There are only 12 no, episodes. I've, I've just been playing games. And I've just been powering through them. Um, Dexter is a pretty good show. I don't know if you've seen Dexter. That's, that's what I hear, but I hear that the ending is terrible. Yeah. See, I haven't finished the, the, the final season, the eighth season. So I'm on... Season six? No, season seven right now. So then I I don't I remember everything that happens up until like the end of season seven, and then I'll have to see how bad it is in season eight. Yeah, but that is I one know, of the shows that show. everyone says it's a really bad ending. So I was like, I'll just avoid it. But it's coming back. I hear so, that it's good. so yeah, like it. Is it? Yeah, twenty. That's why. That's why I'm watching it. Twenty twenty one, new season of Dexter. Like new season, like yeah. A whole new season. Like continuing or like, it's not like a reunion, whatever. Like the show was in, the show started in 2006. Yeah. It ended in 2013. That's seven years ago. And they're just like new season. Yeah. Oh, okay. (laughs) All right. That's literally what every show has been doing. It's like, okay, well, we, I mean, um, people don't like our new stuff. Like reboot shows. You know, a lot of them are usually or like, like continuations. Uh, Fuller House. Yeah, Girl Meets World. Yeah, yeah. Those are all continuations, about. but they're con- they're continuations. But it's still it's like a new thing. Uh, apparently, there's a That's So Raven uh, <laughs> show that's like ongoing right now. Isn't like it? A, but with, it's with when she's older. Yeah, it's with both of them. Obviously. I think. I don't I mean, know. Shout out to Corey in the house. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I want to, I wanted to watch all of Dexter before I, before I get into like the, the new season next year, Yeah, but it's good. Yeah, season yeah. four, probably one of the biggest, uh, I guess twists 
I feel in TV, in my TV viewing. Hmm. And like I knew it was going to happen on my second time around. So like I kept trying to look for uh, like tells and like foreshadowing, but there was nothing. It was just like so out of the blue and it was, it was perfect. And there's another, there's another big twist in season six. That's like really, really good. I was trying to remember like the the general plot of the show, and I just looked it up, and I'm like, oh yeah, I totally remember. It's basically like he's a serial he's, a, he's he yeah he's <laughs> like a, a but it's I was trying to remember because I knew it wasn't just that. It's like he he's a like detective or whatever the fuck. He like solves murders, but he then goes and kills the serial killers. Yeah, he's a, he's a serial killer. Serial killer. Blood spatter analysis. <laughs> so he's not like a detective. He's like the nerd guy. Huh. So like Good when nerd guys. when yeah Shout so he, when like there's blood splatter he comes in and he kind of tells seems like very like specific <laughs> yeah. niche you know huh and then and his sister or his stepsister Deb she's like one of the the best like parts of the show too her like arc throughout the whole show is really good but yeah great show. 12 episodes a season, so it's definitely easy, uh, easy to, to watch. And the first, the first season's really good, too. There's only, like, a few bad seasons. But that's, like, every show. I, yeah, I literally haven't been watching anything. Any free time I've had, I've been, I've been streaming. This last and I watched uh, Freaky last night, because it's now on video on demand. Uh, it's, like, the horror movie with Vince Vaughn, where he's a serial killer, and then he like stabs this young girl and then they like swap bodies. So it's like Freaky Friday. Yeah. Wow. Huh. It's like a it's like a horror comedy a little bit. Yeah. But it's it was dry. it was okay. Like it wasn't amazing. It was funny cuz then you have Vince Vaughn pretending to be a girl cuz like he's a he's a teenage girl trapped in Vince Vaughn's body. Hmm. And he's a serial ki- he's like a serial killer. That's the whole thing. So, like, they're trying yeah. to swap back, but, like, the cops are after Vince, like, the Vince Vaughn body, but it's, like, this girl inside the body. And so there's there's lots of stuff that happens for, like, <laughs> comical yeah, hijinks. A, yeah. Huh. <laughs> and it's, Man, like, surprisingly gory. Movie. Yeah. It was a fun, fun movie. Okay. Remember, uh, remember Lindsay Lohan? Or how she's doing Freaky Friday, thing. yeah. Yeah. That was, yeah. A, that was a good one. With her and, uh, what's her name? No idea. That's a movie I saw on Disney Channel when I was. Crap. No, she's 13. from Halloween. Um, oh, I what's apologize. What's up to these days? You know Probably I mean? just. 8.7 million followers on Instagram. That's a lot. That's a, that's a lot. <laughs> and 8.4 on Twitter. It's wild. She probably isn't like doing anything. I don't think yeah, any trying, real actor's trying. doing anything right now anyways. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not a not a ton of uh, opportunities to really do anything these days. Yeah. yeah, I haven't really I just haven't been watching anything. Also the Raven show that's going on now is called Raven's Home. You want that to be known? <laughs> it's still going. Uh. It is literally still airing apparently. I wonder if it's any good. Tune in next week. Probably um, not. <laughs> we're going to watch all no three seasons of Raven's To the people Home. who watch Raven's Home, but it's probably not good. <laughs> it's probably really not. I mean, the only I reason these, the only reason world. like Girl Meets World was like, okay, was because of the old cast. <laughs> there was one episode, I remember they brought all, like everybody back. They brought the brother, they brought Sean, they brought his parents. It was the best episode. But other than that, the show was just like, <sighs> that show was upsetting because they were, <clears throat> because I watched all of Boy Meets World and then oh, yeah. I watched that show. 100%. Like the, Boy Meets World. I, I, I have the of, DVD set. Yeah. I watched all of Boy Meets World and then I went straight to Girl Meets World um, because I like binged all of Boy Meets World. I found it like online somewhere. And then uh, it was so, <sighs> Girl Meets World is upsetting because there were genuinely episodes that I was like, this is awesome. There, there were actually yeah. episodes where the writing was very similar to, like, Boy Meets World and, like, the, the kind of stuff that they tackled. 
And then, but then the majority of it is like very clearly garbage Disney like yeah. focus group. <laughs> like the problem is it's, it's, it's fucked up. They made it specifically for the Disney Channel. Yeah. So like, I don't know if the writing had to be a certain way because like before yeah. Boy Meets World was on ABC. It was on what was it? TGIF. It was this. You don't know TGIF? Before my, before my time. That's before your it. time. I didn't really? watch it. TGIF, man, that that's I just those watched, were the best uh, TV watching TV days like ever, because you would have maybe two hours of like half an hour comedies, sitcoms like back to back to back, all new. Some of them would even <laughs> have crossover episodes like during TGIF. It was a whole event. It was perfect. Um, I I've heard about this. It was great because you had like Sabrina the Teenage Witch. There was like step by step. There was Boy Meets World. I don't. I don't think Full House. Full House might have been in there. There was Family Matters. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Family Matters. Shout out to Urkel. You know? Good old Steve Urkel. What? Where's the Family Matters <laughs> reunion? Like I don't care about any <laughs> other reunion. Is that what we need? Yeah, Family Matters was great. <laughs> yeah, sure. Especially <laughs> because like, <laughs> because like nerds and like that kind of. Like, I don't they're, think they're that's like the representation that we want, though. You know, Steve Urkel. I mean? Steve Urkel's great, Steve man. Urkel. Yeah. Yeah, but he's he's very like. And then he goes into the machine, and then he's Stefan Urkel. I don't know about that. <laughs> you don't. You didn't know that. No, that's. He didn't know about. He has that like one. a transformation machine, who turns it, <laughs> that turns him from a nerd, to to cool. And then he saw. And this he, like, was like in the show. Oh yeah. I didn't. And, like, I didn't think the show got weird and sci-fi. <laughs> oh yeah. And so <laughs> what? So like in the, the there was always the conundrum because like he like Stephen or Steve had a crush on Laura like the oh. the girl, but then when he turned into Stefan, then she liked him. <laughs> it was a whole. It was a whole thing. Wow. No, I didn't know that yeah, they had great. machines that turned you in into a different person with different personality. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, it was a totally different. Like, like so, he lost the glasses, and then he was like, he was like just the actor, like the the actor who played him. I yeah. forget Jaleel White. I think his name is, and he was like cool and suave and stuff. And opening this yeah, right now on YouTube. Yeah, and I'm I'm looking at it. It's great, man. Family Matters is is a hidden gem. There's not a lot of it is like it's really good, and nobody gives it enough credit. Mm. Nobody does. Mm. Everybody remembers when we when we all talk Boy about World. the. <laughs> I mean, rightfully so though, when it comes to Boy Meets World. Yeah, I still think that's the best sitcom that I that I've seen, just like sitcom wise. You know, I don't oh. really consider like The Office or Parks and Rec or anything like that like a sitcom. Like it, bef- like technically pre is, I don't know yeah like like nineties like pre two thousands sitcoms yeah yeah probably I, I mean Boy spoilers Meets for Boy Meets World but I'm telling you man the episode where Sean's fucking dad dies <laughs> he literally straight up dies yeah. I was like they they he was in a he was in like a wreck and then. They go to the hospital or whatever, and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm not worried at all because yeah. I'm just like, oh it's yeah, yeah, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. It's a sitcom, and then he fucking dies, yeah. and I was like, what? <laughs> Are you serious? But it was in a good like, they actually tackled fucking death and yeah, they loss. did a lot. There was, was some serious. There was always was some great. serious episodes, and they like yeah, never yeah. felt out of place either. Yeah, it felt real. Yeah. Um, Shout out, dude! But even you know, look at look at Full House when Michelle got thrown from a horse and she lost her memory. <laughs> I think that's how they ended the show. Hold, hold the phone. <laughs> I don't know if that's that might have been the season. The what is it? Um, penultimate oh, episode. No, it's the finale. I think she gets her memory back though. I just did a quick Google. I'm and pretty sure. Full House ended 20 years I ago have, today, May 23rd, with a controversial fa- finale involving involving Michelle Tanner temporarily losing her men- yeah. memory after a horse riding accident. Yeah. Wow. What like, a terrible finale. Yeah, that's not good. 
No, I think like the the best '90s sitcom is obviously Seinfeld. Oh, it has Seinfeld. To be. I mean, yeah. But it's in yeah, its own yes. league because it's like you can't really compare like Boy Meets World to Seinfeld. Seinfeld is it's I mean, like Seinfeld is a lot more of a. I don't want to say that Boy Meets World is not a comedy, but it's not really a comedy. You know what I mean? Like, Seinfeld is... Those after-school specials. A lot more of a, like, a comedy. Like, yeah. they're trying, it's trying to be a, a funny show, you know? Like, they world. craft jokes yeah. to be like, okay, here's the punchline. At the end of the joke, we're going to start it in, at the beginning. That kind of stuff. Whereas, like, Boy Meets World really tells, like, a story. Yeah. Instead of, instead yeah. of like... I guess Seinfeld still sort of tells a story, but like it's more. Yeah, but they're all set up punchline, set up. Remember the episode where they were in the fucking Chinese restaurant for <laughs> thirty minutes. Oh yeah, it's a whole episode. Yeah. Of them just trying to get a table at the Chinese restaurant, and they're too hungry, so they keep considering leaving. It's, the whole thing. <laughs> it's great, but it's so uh, like people. It's relatable. Going back and watching that now, though, not a lot of it would be super relatable because, like, it's no. an era before smartphones. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's not how things work anymore a lot of the time. But uh, it, it still was interesting. There's still, there still like will that. always be a couple of episodes that people will relate, no matter how yeah. far we get into, like, technology. Yeah. Like, there will always be something. There's still a kernel of, like truth to each of it too yeah. even if like the process has changed you know what i mean yeah 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 so that's that's your 90s sitcom segment man i love <laughs> me some 90s sitcom there was you know like saturday morning cartoons that too yeah but i watched like the weird saturday morning cartoons because my family didn't uh didn't have cable for the longest time because my parents uh just didn't didn't want to get cable so we had an antenna that got, like, all the local channels, you know? Mm -hmm. So, like, Fox or ABC, and that's, like, it. So I had, like, two channels of Saturday morning cartoons, and they they were, they were not great. Like, ABC, I remember, around the end of the morning, would just start playing, like, the same exact reruns of, like, Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. <laughs> like, that was the end of it. But, like, I had, like, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles... Was the, the cartoon one that I made? Or the watched. I guess obviously yeah, the, cartoon. the cartoon. The live and action I remember. Oh man. The one season of live action Ninja Turtles. I didn't get much. Like, okay, real talk. This is uh, since we're in like uh also video game. <laughs> Nostalgia you know, of our of the world. TGIF and Saturday morning cartoons. I genuinely <clears throat> when I started listening to Xbox Unlocked, like the the or not, Podcast Unlocked, the Xbox podcast that IGN does. Um, and they started talking about, like, every now and then they'll reference the Viva Pinata game mm -hmm. and how that's, like, a classic and whatnot. People really like that game and whatnot. When I first heard that, I was like, oh, so they made a game off of the show. Interesting. And then and over time, I started looking. There was a fucking Saturday morning cartoon yeah, that was Viva Pinata. And that's why, straight up, later I looked it up and no, like, it's... I'm pretty sure the game was developed and then they made a show off of it. The yeah. game was what came first. And I was, I had no idea. I just knew it from this shitty, like animated Saturday morning cartoon about these. That's pinatas. crazy. Yeah. Can you, can you imagine like, when bad. like people think people will watch like the Assassin's Creed movie and then, then they hear that there's games and they're like, Oh man, they made a, oh. they made a game off of that movie. Oh. Oh, there's that probably a lot of people in the world I don't know about who their a lot, first? But there's definitely. Well, yeah, maybe not a lot, but like, like the Tomb Raider. There's definitely some. Well, maybe not Tomb yeah. Raider. Tomb Raider is pretty old for people yeah, to know. Tomb Raider has, yeah, Tomb Raider is even older than Assassin's Creed when it comes to being around for a yeah. long, long time. So, but like Prince of so, Persia, <laughs> all these terrible fucking movies. Real talk. I, when I was younger, and saw the Prince of Persia movie and hadn't played the games. I uh, quite enjoyed. And God. then as I got older, I was like, oh, everyone hates this. Interesting. I, yeah. didn't, I didn't realize. I watched it when I was very young, so I don't, I don't know. When I don't know. I don't know. I played, like, obviously I played the games before, and I loved the Prince of Persia games. Um, 
but yeah, the movie was just bad. I don't think there's ever going to be a good video yeah, game movie. Warcraft, it already exists. Fight me. Everyone talks about this. Warcraft is a good fucking movie. I didn't and no see one it. ever mentions it. And that and it all But it obviously isn't because <laughs> I quite enjoy people... it. What's the Rotten Tomatoes for Warcraft? I know it's not great, but I genuinely really like the movie. I don't know I the, but then, I guess I don't know the story of Warcraft, so it would be Ooh, different. Never mind. For me. <laughs> no, I'm definitely in the minority, and that's okay. <laughs> I um, it's I I quite enjoyed it. I mean, uh, fucking the Alicia Vikander um, Tomb Raider was not bad at all. Uh, genuinely, <sighs> not not a bad movie. I didn't I didn't care. It wasn't for like it. amazing, but it was it was fine. It was okay, but it wasn't like yeah. I don't know. It's hard to, and that's the same thing with. The Uncharted movie. It's going to be... It's not going to be a great movie. Oh, like, isn't there rumors that there's supposed to be a trailer for that tomorrow? I don't know where I heard that. But you think I, that they would... tomorrow, Thursday. You, know you think I mean. that they would do that for... I don't know why I'm thinking tomorrow. Oh, yeah, for the Game Awards? Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm a... No, I heard rumors about it. Love Tom Holland. Don't like him as Drake. It's just weird. And you don't know. You're not giving him a chance. No, but he's too. You don't know yet. He's too young. Like Drake's young like, Drake. The I don't want three. a young. I don't he's want there. a young Drake. And then like he Sully, I just don't understand why Mark Wahlberg is Sully. <laughs> like for one, movie. Mark Wahlberg's like five foot three. He's in the people. <laughs> he's a tiny he's man. Like, well, he's not a five foot three. He's probably like five foot five. <laughs> I was about to say I was like five three is very. He's tiny, tiny, but he's like he's built. Five, he's my height. Okay. Okay, All right, then, that then, is average. Then that is average. what is he? He's five, five eight. Five eight. Five eight. Yeah. But like Sully is a is a tall man. <laughs> He's I mean, taller than Drake. I never really. Sure. Sure. I don't know. I, don't think I think it's gonna. I think bombs. it's gonna bomb. Uh, there's no way that movie financially bombs. Not financially, but critically bombs. Well, actually, at this point. I feel like every movie is financially going to bomb. Yeah. <laughs> and, and with COVID, I don't really know what movie financially succeeds. Yeah, I, don't I don't know. know how how, that works. I don't know how that's going to work. It's yeah, going to be interesting knows. how, like, with the future of, of that. But okay, so critically, Tom Holland will. is a presenter for the Game Awards. Yeah. And he used, and Jeff Keighley used the image of him with the Drake outfit on. <sighs> so, like, is if they don't show a trick, oh like you, you don't think it's weird, up, gives you away award. And <laughs> no, I, I definitely think it's weird. No, no, no. no I, I mean, I, I wasn't a fan. I was like, you don't think it's weird to have like Tom Holland as currently yeah, and no, still not- Spider Man, who Peter Parker is, in fact, a like little baby boy. He's little baby Spider Man. I mean, that's gonna be Drake. He's gonna be a little baby Drake. Yes, but he doesn't, he's supposed, he looks all, like, tough, and he's not, like, yeah. remember Uncharted 3. I mean, he genuinely looks like, that's, I mean, that's what I would say, like, looking at the image, he, he does kind of look like the, a, a little older than the Uncharted 3 young Drake, which is, like, you know, I don't know, three or four years older, and that's, like, college Drake, because he was, like, high school, middle school Drake, I don't know, in that game. I can see he's he's college Drake, you know he's out there. But he's, he's out there. It's so, I think it's dumb. I think it's just. I mean, I do too. I definitely would not have chosen that. And when that was all being announced, I was like, "Can we not? Can we? Can we do just like regular?" Like, Drake? wasn't the rumor uh, back when whatever, the games were still coming out that like, oh, Mark Wahlberg was going to be Drake? That was like now that's the whole joke. Is like Mark Wahlberg was in talks to be Drake. And so much time has passed that he's I mean, now they, solid. I mean, it's literally gone through like five different directors or something like that. Yeah, that's it's, that I can't doomed. believe that game or that doomed. movie is being made. There's another. That's another bad movie, video game movie. It hasn't, it hasn't come out. It no, I said do yet. like because I said it's doomed, oh, and okay. I said there's another uh, video, bad video game movie. Doom? There was a Doom movie. Oh my God! Really? The Rock was in it. And Keith, uh, what's his name? Oh, I've definitely heard of this before. The dude from, um, dude from The Boys. Shout out, man. The, the, the Irishman? Is he Irish? British? I don't know. I've never seen that movie either. 
The Boys? No, The Irishman. It's me. Uh, <laughs> Netflix. <laughs> I forget. No, uh, <laughs> like we've talked about the boy. I forget his name. I forget show. his name uh, in the show, and I forget his, the actor's name. But they were both. <clears throat> excuse me. They were both in Doom. Doom is a very uh, terrible movie. It doesn't look shot well at all, just from this one trailer. Well, and then the funny thing like, is that like the end, I forget something happens, and then it goes into like first person. And it goes into like it's it's mimicking the video game, so it's like all these things are coming up. It's bad. It's very weird because this this yeah I don't know this trailer like I get that it's supposed to it looks like it's trying to be a horror movie, um, but like the lighting there's like no lighting. Like it's it's in that that level that level of dark where you can barely see what's happening like the entire time. Yeah, well it's I think it's like early two thousands. Yeah. Yeah, like, anyone watching the video version, look at the screenshot. Look at this. <laughs> this is them running. Yeah. Like, you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but uh, speaking of video games, are you excited about the Game Awards? I am. I'm pretty pumped about it. The thing is, is, like, there's not going to be probably as many announcements. Four hours. There's got to be something. It's I don't four know. Four hours long. But, like... <sighs> I don't know. I guess we'll see. I'm not I'm not expecting like game releases, like things that are like, oh, it's out now. I'm not expecting that. There will be a couple of them, but that's kind of it, you know? Yeah, I don't I don't remember what they've done in the past when it comes to that. But I mean, I'm not I'm not necessarily excited about the announcements. I'm I'm excited excited for trailers hanging out. Trailers are going to be cool, but hanging out, celebrating video games over the last year, you know? That's what it's all about. It's always fun. This has been a pretty good year. I'm I'm trying to, like, make my top ten, and there's a lot of games in there. Yeah. Yeah, there's... It's... uh, 2020's been pretty damn good for video games, dude. Pretty damn good. All right, here's what I want to do, because I never... Are we doing, like, a... I, I usually do this with friends... And I want to do this right now because usually we do it like 30 minutes before the show and then we're like rushing to like put together a thing. I'm going to make a Google Doc right oh, now. Let's do this. And we're going to we're going to make predictions. And, and you will really see how right I am about video games. OK. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sure thing. Yeah. Hold on. Let's do the rightest. Game. The rightest. The rightest. <laughs> Game While we're doing that, FYI, I started uh, Immortals Phoenix Rising last night. Holy shit. Yeah. Is that a fucking good game? I'm jealous. It is. I don't know. Didn't, did you say that it's like it's supposedly short? Uh, short-ish, not like I don't know. Odyssey length. But. Maybe not Odyssey length, but like there's a lot in there. When, when I started it, I was like... Open the map, and I was like, "Oh shit, there's a lot." But yeah, yeah no, really... I mean it's it's pretty big. Um, it says that this to beat the story, it takes around thirty hours. So yeah, yeah, definitely shorter on an RPG spectrum these days. Probably like Anything. well, it's not. It's more. It's more Odyssey than RPG. I feel. Well, Odyssey is an RPG. I guess, but like. It's oh. Odyssey. No, no, it's Odyssey. Okay, no, it's Odyssey without like the RPG elements. I mean, there's still like gear and, and skills. There's gear, and but like not. And, but like, I know it's not to the same degree. But, it's like, very. It's still it is there. so men. It's so minimal that I don't classify it as an RPG. It's an action adventure game, that's just like that has some RPG doused into it. No. Yeah, because like you can ignore. If we're talking- you can ignore all of that and still play the game. Like I'm playing the game on hard, and it's like still this is this is a, not a baby's game. And you're Don't ignoring your skills and all of your gear and yeah, because it doesn't it doesn't doesn't <coughs> it doesn't hold weight. Well, that's just not good. That doesn't. No, like it's the a, the combat's fun. The combat's yeah. fun, and like no, the no, I, the fighting's yeah, fun, that. and the puzzles are fun. But, like, you don't have to... The thing that I love about, like, a good RPG is that 
you could like bash your head like even in Assassin's Creed, like Valhalla, um, you can be really stuck on a on like a boss or an area or like there's a lot of tough enemies, and like you can change up your your skill tree, you can change up your loadout, and again then it will actually work. Yeah, that's what I love about those kind of games. But like with with Immortals, it feels like it's just there to be there. I don't the, feel um, I don't feel the need to, and I also man, don't like that you have to unlock I've only the watched, super hard mode by playing. I've only watched Dawn one um, one review about it, but in the review, they were at least the person that I watched said like really did praise the RPG mechanics or not mechanics, but aspects of it, of like the progression and how like the, the progression curve feels really good of like getting new abilities and getting new gear and whatnot. Like it, it feels really well paced out and it does feel impactful. So that's, that's a bummer. Like the abilities, yeah, are, are fun, but I mean like you don't, I don't know how to explain it. Like you don't need them. Like, I don't know. I've just been in, in the combat <laughs> is just it's it like you unless maybe there's going to be a cliff where it finally gets hard. But I'm like, this is not that difficult. That's the same with well, Valhalla from, as well. Valhalla I, is not that, is not that difficult. I've definitely heard is that Valhalla is like way too easy. It's way it's too easy. Yeah. So easy that I'm like crippling my or like, yeah, crippling myself by um not investing my my level up points mm -hmm. so that I don't over level. I'm like under level for yeah. all of these areas to try and make it seem a little bit harder. <laughs> yeah, I I've watched more stuff about Valhalla and the more I watch the more I'm like not as excited to get to it, but it's okay. I'll get to it in 3 years, so it's fine. It's <laughs> I I love it. I think it's probably my second favorite Assassin's Creed. What? I can't say anything because I haven't played it. So you know what? But it's just like that's good. I'm happy for you. It's tough because I can't hold the older Assassin's Creeds higher because it because of like rose tinted glasses. And it's like, well, I played these like before all of these uh, quality of life things were in the game. So I have to value them differently. Like I don't. It's like Assassin's Creed Two obviously is not better than odyssey or uh valhalla yeah but it can still be your favorite you know what i mean it's not technically better but it can still be like i i think i would still say that revelations is probably my favorite assassin's creed it's the like, only one i haven't finished it's not the best one <laughs> by far it's the only one i never finished damn old man Ezio is just like nah yeah was, dude he's <laughs> out like, there <laughs> old man Ezio. i love it Got the but hook no, blade. I don't know. There's two vital parts: the hook and the blade. I love, uh, I love what a Valhalla does. I just wish it was harder. Yeah, I'm gonna get to it eventually. I played 30 minutes of uh, Odyssey on my on my uh, exercise bike today, so I'm, I'm I'll get there eventually in another <laughs> 150 hours. When we'll, we'll Assassin's Creed, what's the next one? I guess. It, it's not gonna be we called Samurai. It. They're gonna have to do it. They're running out. <laughs> They're running out of things to do. I do not think that Assassin's Creed in feudal Japan or anything like that is the next game. It could be, but I, I definitely wouldn't make that prediction. What else could it be? Because literally, people have been saying that for years. Like but they like, wanted a Samurai Assassin's Creed forever. So like, the fact that they would now be like, all right. Let's go. I'm just like, trying to think of like that Ghost what else Tsushima came out, is there. Like, I don't know. What other they, like they, they got time literally periods. the entire world and no, and but they've done it all. History of time. We've done it all. No, nah, they no, they haven't done it all. What else is no there? Way. We got Vikings. I mean, we got Greek mythology. I'm literally just thinking like the history of America. They did the Revolutionary War. They didn't do the Civil War. Fuck it. Go back to the Civil War. No, because that's there, the one like that's like battles most battles and wars and his of uh, like I mean what they've done, they slightly touched on World War One with Assassin's Creed Syndicate, but fuck it, 
World War One. You know what I mean? They literally have Asa- but assassins they, uh, in, whole, in a world um, war are, world. is weird. <laughs> they actually did the fucking. Um, they there was literally like World War One missions in in Syndicate. Shout out to Syndicate, my second favorite. I don't remember. If actually, if not my first favorite, I love Syndicate so. I think much. mine goes Odyssey, that Valhalla, Black Flag. Yeah. But then um, again, like Black Flag is not a great Assassin's Creed game, but it's a great nope, ship that's, game. That's what I've always said. That is what I've always said. It's not a good Assassin's Creed game. It's a great pirate game. Yeah. It's a fantastic pirate game. And it's still like um And nothing can nothing comes close. Like even in Odyssey when you have like ship battles, I'm like, man, this is just not as good as yeah, Black Flag. Evie Fry, you know? I'm just like looking at syndicate videos. Shout <laughs> out to Evie. She was awesome. I wish that they could remaster those games and make them run on the engines that we have now and make it so syndicate that like it still feels good I too disagree. like when they remastered the Ezio collection that was a little um eye opening i still will play them but that was a little it's yeah. tough it's tough to play Ooh. those like the the older ones yeah. but but yeah okay let's do this all right game of the we year get... awards <laughs> that's not it <laughs> <laughs> i was just reading and, and yep. just Game of the Year Game awards, of the Year awards. starting with best esports team. Oh, we're going from the no. bottom to the top. Yes. Okay. That's what we're gonna do. Okay. And I'm gonna say no. We're not. Do we want to give a prediction for? Oh each yeah, we're one going for just, we're going for all. But like, we don't know anything about. Who cares? This. I don't. Which one looks the coolest? <laughs> I mean, I hear a lot about. No. So best esports team. What's hot? Damn One Gaming, League of Legends, Dallas Empire, Call of Duty, G2 Esports, League of Legends, San Francisco Shock, Overwatch League, Team Secret, Dota 2. I mean, can I just vote for the Shock because it's Overwatch League? Yeah, there you go. You can. I'm going to go right, for G. No, I'm going to go with uh, Damn One. If I one. lose because of these <clears throat> picks, I'm going to be mad about That's it. That's too bad. I'm going with Damn One. <laughs> Damn One Gaming. League okay. of Legends. I mean, that's honestly the smart pick. Yeah. Uh, Cisco Shack. Okay. And then best esports host, Alex Golden Boy Men- uh, Mendez, Alex Machine Richardson, <laughs> uh, FA Shocks. <laughs> Di- oh, man, I don't know how to say her last name. Deporte? It's something super like i think she's like swedish i follow her on instagram and on twitter i've followed her for years because i used to watch but you stuff. don't but know great. how to say your name shocks is great no because it's just shocks <laughs> that's what she goes by uh james dash patterson i think he's also a league dude i don't know shocks is like the league stuff in europe and then jorian shiver vander hygen that's what i'm gonna go with that's what i'm gonna go with there wow it doesn't give where she's from. <laughs> I um, thought it wasn't. I'm. You 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 pick I'm first. Gonna... Oh. No no I picked first last time. You pick first this time. Okay I'm going with Golden Boy. Also what we should do normally in the other categories is we should I mean right now it doesn't fucking matter because we <laughs> don't care but we need to predict and then say what we want to win like what we're actually voting for yeah and then uh, have a prediction but here don't give a fuck. I'm a, I'm, I'm the first. Say, this is the first annual Tyson and Teddy Talk, the Game Awards predictions, predictions. 2020. <laughs> first annual let's make, 2020. Let's so make it. <laughs> let's make it so a, the longest title. The longest title ever. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Um, let's see. Literally everything. I ha- my whole doc is in bold for no reason. <laughs> um, the best. Okay. Be bold. So said, Isn't that like a Doritos? Doritos, be bold. Uh, it's something like I that. I swear it was Doritos. I don't know if it's Dorito, but it's some sort of like snack thing, <laughs> you know? Um, I Shox has won this before, and I feel like Alex has won this before too. Golden Boy. I. Do they get, re- get, do they get re-nominated? Or I guess that's best, uh, like, creator that they don't get nominated yeah. again? Yeah. 
<clears throat> I would, and also on the others, I'll read out the description for the categories, but for these, again, we're just throwing out it's random guesses because we're <clears throat> not super in that uh, yeah. that world. I'm going to say James Dash Patterson because I know Dash has been around in, in League for a while. I'm pretty sure. I'm going to say that and somebody's going to be like, no, man, he's a smite guy. <laughs> actually, <but laughs> actually, actually, he commentates fucking smite. Okay. And then best esports game for the game that has delivered the best overall esports experience to players, inclusive of tournaments, community support, and content updates, irrespective of genre or platform. So this one is interesting. We have Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Counter Strike Global Offensive, Fortnite, League of Legends, Valorant. I will say League won last year. I'm going to go with... I also need to be voting oh, no, while go. I'm doing this. I'm literally signed in, so I'm just going to click vote on all of these. I, I voted for... I'm actually going to vote for Shocks. Okay. Um. Yeah, I did go first. Or you did go first last time. So, yeah, League yes. won last year. I wish I was paying more attention because I don't really know if people like Valorant's support you know what I mean? I have no idea. If is it still are. popular? Or is it still in like the top ten? Know. Probably the top ten. Know. Maybe not the top five. That's the thing. But like, even if people are still playing that game and if they still like it, I have no idea if the esports scene is like well supported. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's a difference between the game still being successful and like if it has a thriving esports scene. Um, but this is basically still a random guess too. I I would say League if it. I mean, it still might win this year. Fuck it. But I'll, I'll say Valorant to be, to be different. Might as well. What I'm going with I'm going with one? Fortnite. Fortnite, okay. You just cannot uh, you cannot vote against good old Epic. <laughs> they got their hands in everything. In the cookie jar, <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, and then we have. Um, <coughs> Best esports event. We do not know anything about these. Blast Premier Spring 2020 European Finals for CSGO. Call of Duty League Championship 2020 Call of Duty. Uh, IEM Kato Weiss 2020. Oh, yeah, CSGO. man. Kato Weiss. <laughs> Kato Weiss. League of Legends <laughs> World Championship 2020. I feel like League has won several times. Overwatch League Grand Finals 2020. I didn't I'm, actually pay I'm going to go with. Either. Uh, the grand finals because that's the nicest looking picture out of all of these four <laughs> or five for Al. Yeah. Yeah. No. Overwatch League, man. I used to follow it. I feel really bummed that I have kind of fallen off the train. But like, it's not. I don't know if it's like esports, marketed well. Like, it's not. Well, I mean, it was for a long time. Yeah. To be honest, but I don't know if um, I haven't seen a lot of stuff about it this this last uh, year. But I will say. It's super, super fucking fun to watch. As somebody who's watched other esports in the past, like I, it was really fun to follow Overwatch League. But with any esport, if you leave for a season or, yeah. or a year or even less and you come back, rosters change so often in esports that like Dallas Fuel, there's no one on that team that I know. No one. Yeah. They're, comp they're either completely new or from different teams, but there's no one that was on the roster when I was watching Literally earlier this year. Like, I was watching Owl in, like, February. Like, it's it's wild. I am going to say the Call of Duty League Championship because I feel like that's been nominated for the last, like, two years, but I don't think it's ever won. And I don't... I have no basis to say other than that. Like, no, these no are really, evidence. These, these still go towards the total, but these are just, like, our throwaway points. Yeah. <laughs> Oh God! Especially this one. Best esports coach. Oh man, I know. We I know, I know all the coaches. Danny Zonic Sorensen from uh, <laughs> CS:GO, who's wearing two headsets in this picture. One on his neck, one on his head, and both like I don't what. Not gonna question that one. And then we have Day Dash He Krusty Park. From oh, I know why he's League, doing. I, I know why he's doing the double headset. Oh, yeah. Because he's listening to, like, somebody else in the and ears and then talking to, like, maybe, I don't know, what the players in the, the other headset. Like, 
but like why not have that in one system yeah. you know what i mean i feel like that's the flaw because he looks i, uh, I think he looks this like guy he's a good multitasker listed, then yeah, yeah. Like, yeah i feel like this guy that i just listed is on the shock because he has because he's overwatch league and he has an orange jacket so i'm like he's probably the shocks coach he wasn't the shock coach when i was watching but now he is shocker Shock. oh. <laughs> shocker they changed it oh a little shocker okay. <laughs> The Spider-Man villain. And then we have Fabian or Fabian Grabs Loman Loman uh, from LOL. And then we have Lee Zeffa Jamin from LOL. And then Raymond Rambo Lussier from COD. I'm gonna say is it my turn? I think it is. Sure. I can't remember. Yeah. I'm gonna say yeah, it is. <laughs> fuck <Yeah>. it. <laughs> I'm gonna say Fabian grabs low man. And yes, I'm going to copy that name. It's not letting me copy it because I have to, because it drags when I do that. Oh no. Oh no. What? Because I don't want to type all that. Can't you highlight it? There we go. It wouldn't let me when I was oh. on the, the side by side view. But uh. I'll figure it again. Um, so yeah, we're going to, we're going to do that. Fabian grabs Loman from league of legends. And I'm going to vote for him too. Good pick. You know, I want him to win. I'm going. I'm going with my boy Rambo. <laughs> mostly, boy because, Rambo. mostly because the name is Rambo, and yep. I like that movie. <laughs> Close enough, dude. Also, now I'm trying to vote and it won't let me. It's not letting me do it. Oh no! I'm gonna refresh the page real quick because I want to vote as I go along here because I did sign in, even though your vote counts for like ten percent or something, like the community vote. Ten percent. You know, it's, it's more than five. Than <laughs> you are correct. It is more than five. You're so right. Um, so you said you're going Rambo. Rambo. Okay. Let me get you got to be a good here. coach with a name like Rambo. Or you're just you're a terrible coach because you're just like ah fuck it you're you're just like. Isn't, isn't that Rambo's whole thing? It's just like Leroy Jenkins? No. No, he's very no? meticulous. He's very he? calculated. Yeah. Mm. I feel like Rambo, and you the can't picture that I, I think of in my head for Rambo is when he's just like... He's got two machine guns. Like two, yeah, two yeah. machine guns. Just, ah, but the thing is, know, that is that he never, he never uh, instigates... It's always mm. people coming after Rambo. Likely story, dude. Mm. People coming after Rambo, and he's just like, whoa... Don't make me go all Whoa. Rambo on you. And then he has to go yeah. all Rambo on him. But that's the phrase. You see what I mean? Okay. And then we have best esports athlete. We have Ian Crimzik supporter from Call of Duty. Uh, H.E.O. Showmaker Sue uh, from League of Legends. Uh, Kim Kenyon <clears throat> Gionbu from uh, League of Legends. Anthony Shotzi Cuevas Castro. Cuevas Castro. It's close enough from Call of Duty. Uh, Matthew Zhu. Oh Matthew. my god. Matthew. Matthew. His gamer tag is Z Y W O O. Z Wu. Z Wu. Yeah, Z Wu. Her bout. And then that's from CSGO. Okay, I'm just going to say. I've literally heard <clears throat> of zero of these people. I'm just going to have a, 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 a quick hot take is that like people want games and gaming personalities to be taken seriously. <laughs> We want games to be taken seriously with the, from the rest of the world. Drop our goddamn, like, weird-ass names. I'm sorry. Uh, that's just a part of esports culture at this point. You can't, you can't well, it's, change it's, that. No, but it's like, everywhere. Everybody's got, like, your username, but it's just... It's, oh, yeah. But especially in esports, they, they choose it, and that is what they are called. Like, but it's in so... The, like, spectating uh, it's, and everything. I don't know. It is odd. It's very odd. Like, I get it. I've thought about that, especially when it comes to, like, Overwatch League. I was kind of surprised, like, when they started that. I was a little shocked. I was, like, oh, I was San Francisco shocked. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um, when I, when that started and they were still doing these words, like, names, because that owl started with, like, the very, like, football format yeah. of, like, American football and that whole thing. So I, I figured if there was any time to drop it, it would be then, but they did not. Um, so you're saying, oh, I'm going first. I'm going with, uh, where's man, all the same game. I'm going to go with Crimzix. Crimzix. Okay. 
That's from Call of Duty. Yeah. Ian Crimsix Porter. Porter. Uh, let's see. I'm going to get him over in the col- column for you. Yeah, and I don't then, know. Yeah, who knows? These who names. Fucking, yeah. Usually I at least recognize some of them. Like, there's no one in here from Overwatch League. And there's yeah. no one in here. There's two people from League, but they're they're global teams. Those, those aren't NA uh, um, teams, I don't think. That's the same team. Nobody from like Destiny. Jersey. <laughs> Man, that Destiny esports <laughs> scene is out there thriving, you know. Good old but trials. like, usually, almost every year, Faker is here, who's a big League of Legends player, and I recognize him. He's not here this year, so that's interesting. I'm gonna go with Showmaker. Heo Showmaker Sue. That's who I'm gonna go from League of Legends. Don't know what team. He's smart, got a cool a smart light pick. blue jersey. That is the smart He's got pick. A cool light blue you know? jersey. Uh, let's see. Best. Okay, now <coughs> we're into games. Now finally. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> now we're into games. All right. This is where the timestamp begins for. <laughs> we just cut all that Game off. Awards prediction. Just get rid of it. I'm gonna no, we're not gonna get no, rid I of know. it. But I, I I probably will actually put the timestamp right here. Yeah, it's like this is where okay. we talk about games. This is where we talk about games. We're going to predict and say what we want. Best debut game. Oh, man, I'm excited about this. I was wanting to be done with the podcast today by 5 o'clock, but, like, Omega lol at this point. You know what I mean? We're getting through these predictions. And then we'll... uh, We'll refine it in, like... Well, it'll be be nice and refined in episode, like, 30. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, we we needed to talk about shows. We needed to catch up. And I also wanted to do these predictions, so it's fine. Um, (coughs) All right. Best debut game... For the best debut game created by a new independent studio. That's an interesting... Okay. Uh, Carry On, Mortal Shell, Raji, an Ancient Epic, Roki, uh, and Phasmophobia. I... Uh, so I listened to the Kind of Funny Games cast where they did their predictions. Oh, so that's it gave me a rough cheating. draft of... <laughs> no, it just at least gave me a rough draft of all the games that were up mm-hmm. for everything and all that. And I did hear some of their logics for for some of their picks and whatnot, but like, I don't all of, I don't think any of them voted for Mortal Shell, and I think Mortal Shell is very possibly the winner. Um, like, what was it? Imran was saying that he thought Carry On had more of a shot than Mortal Shell, and I was like, really? No. I but um, when it comes to just what people have talked about, I mean, it's phasmophobia. It's phasmophobia. Yeah. It's phasmophobia. Let's be real. Like they're all they're all good games. Setting. Let's not let's not yeah. get it twisted. Like they're all I haven't played Mortal Shell, but I've heard good things from Vizzy, so I'm gonna I wanna play that soon. Cause it's supposed to be like yeah. pretty short too. Um Yeah. I heard it was pretty good. And I wanna play Carry On, but like yeah, Phasmophobia has just it's like the Among Us. It's just it's it's yeah. taken the world huge the gaming world by storm. Um, <clears throat> I don't really have a preference. I would say that I would want Mortal Shell to win just from what I've seen of that game, but I don't I don't have a preference here. I haven't played any of these, so I'm not even going to put a preference. Do you have one? Uh, I, I think, <clears throat> no, I think I'm the same. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, content creator, <coughs> my voice is leaving me, of the year for a streamer or content creator who has made an important and positive impact on the community in 2020. Um, a lot of peers, shout out from my favorite podcast, Play, Watch, Listen. Everybody go listen to that. I'm really excited. <laughs> After we finish this podcast, I'm going to do Postmates, and I have a new episode, and it's an hour and a half long, and I'm pretty hyped about it. Uh, Jay Ann Lopez, that's a quick sidebar. Uh, Nick Merckx, Tim the Tapman, and Valkyrie. So this one was one of those where listening to Kind of Funny, I was like, they are out of touch because from, from their picks. And they're, and they're biased. They're, they're, well... Kind of because it's sure, like they but most of them didn't pick Alana or anything. Really? Like they they were still like going on what they thought, but um, they're just in general. Most of them don't really watch a lot of Twitch streams or like yeah. or are even in that culture. Um, Valkyrie is fucking huge. Oh yeah, and I don't think they realize that. Like no one said Valkyrie. I was like Valkyrie is one of the fastest growing streamers of this year. Like if not, I think she is the fastest growing streamer of 2020. Like she has some insane stat like that. So I'm gonna say Valkyrie. Just fuck it. I want Alana to win though. Yeah, I'm gonna say Tim, but I want Alana. I'm gonna put what we want in parentheses. I'll share this doc with you afterwards. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I'm gonna put what we want. I'm gonna say Tim because Tim. of the he's been nominated a few the Fall years. Guys 
phenomenon. That's fair. When when that came, like man, everybody so was good. literally talking about it. It was so like <laughs> it was insane. So it was fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> when he finally won, it was so good because yeah. it was literally like days. Oh yeah. It was of, so of him long. trying. It's great. Um. Okay. Next category is best multiplayer for outstanding online multiplayer gameplay and design, <laughs> no. including co-op and massive Animal multiplayer Crossing. Get out of here. experiences, irrespective of game genre or platform. Real to, uh, I'll read the categories and then I'll give you a, a side. Okay. <laughs> Animal Crossing: New Horizons, uh, Among Us, Call of Duty: Warzone, Fall Guys: Ultimate Knockout, and Valorant. Real talk. If this game was on here, I would vote for Ghost of Tsushima Legends, but it's not on there. So I'm... I'm Animal Crossing is terrible it's multiplayer. Okay, like, it takes forever to go to Animal somebody Crossing. else's island. It's... Yeah. Yeah. No. Not... Listening to that kind of funny one, Greg was like, a joke of a nominee. Yeah, like, it really <laughs> is. Like, yeah, it's a, it's a fun game to play with your friends, but, like, shit, it's terrible to play it's multiplayer. It's not good multiplayer. Like, yeah, like... Yeah. It, um, this is tough. Like... <clears throat> I'm saying Among Us. I I feel like out of it's between Among Us and Fall Guys categories. Yeah, out of all of the categories, <laughs> I just typed Among Gus. <laughs> among Gus. Among Gus. We're all just you know, Among where Gus. Is he? We're just, there's <laughs> one guy named guys? Gus, and we're just Among <laughs> we're him. We're Among him. <laughs> oh my god. Um, uh, yeah, out of all the categories that Among Us is nominated for, I feel like multiplayer is where it's gonna win. You know. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Among Us as well. And then out of what I would want, I would probably say Fall Guys. I would probably want Fall Guys. Too. I think I just want Among Us because it it was just a crazy crazy how that game like blew up. Like it's not even a 2020 game. It's just like wow. really cool how it came out how in it all happened. Yeah, yeah, that is it is really wild. Let's see. Best sports slash racing for Love the them. best traditional sports. and non-traditional sports and racing <laughs> games. Uh, Dirt 5, F1 2020, FIFA 21, NBA 2K21, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 plus 2. So this one's interesting because it's like usually at a lot of outlets. So to people, if you don't know how this this is voted because everybody every year all the gamers are like oh i can't believe they fixed the vote yeah. jeff Keighley made death stranding win Damn that's you, not jeff. how it works like literally um let's see they they outline it on the website as to how they work but i'm pretty sure at least in the past few years 90 percent of it um comes from here no go to the front page i'll find it that way 90 percent of the 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 what goes into who wins is a, like a, a panel of jury members across the world mm -hmm. and like different <clears throat> uh different outlets and whatnot so you have to think when you're predicting you have to think about like who is going to win based on like the industry and critics and whatnot you know what i mean yeah that's what you have to think about there is a now that I'm looking at this, on the website, there is a player's voice section. I don't know what this is about. It's where There's we get to rounds. use our voice as gamers yes. <laughs> around the world. You get five votes. Vote every round and find out who wins live. I guess it's just a player's voice. Boom. Yeah. This is the it's game. Like pl it's like they have ten people's games choice. <laughs> yeah. But you do... Uh, I can't seem to find it on this site right now. I had it up earlier. But... Um, you do have like a little bit of a of a voice, but mm -hmm. it's not like it's very minimal. Like you can vote, but it's very minimal as to how that actually affects the outcome. So when it comes to like sports and racing games, it's very interesting because like these are people at the outlets that are gonna like the people who vote here are gonna be people who play the game. Yeah. And but not every outlet has those people. So like then I feel like it does fall on the relatively mainstream kind of people, and I feel like Tony Hawk's is is what uh, people would choose those types of people. But it's, it's tough. Like I don't games. know anything about uh, Dirt F one or FIFA. I, I know. Hear a lot of, I I will say I actually do hear a lot of good things about uh, Dirt Five. I feel like people really like that one. But is it like comparable com comparable to like Forza? 
uh, this year this because year? Forza there wasn't a Forza, yeah. Forza. But I have heard from people that normally like Forza that Dirt was like what they were playing instead. Um, uh, so I don't know. Dirt Five's not a bad choice for sure. Absolutely. I'm, also, if you guys want, it's at the bottom of the Game Awards website um, where there's a thing that says jury. jury. You can click that. And there's also, and it'll show you all the outlets that are voting and all the people that are voting. And then there's also an FAQ. And there, yeah, the award process. I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with two. FIFA. Okay. One, because right. it's EA Vancouver. So I got to vote for <laughs> Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> and vote, two, vote because you know your, soccer your country, man. People, people love that shit. <laughs> they do, even though the microtransactions are like yeah. egregious in that game. In it's like, the classic, like, oh, I hate the microtransactions, and it's like, well, then stop playing the game. And it's like, well, yeah. I don't hate them that I'm, much. I'm gonna say fuck it, and I'm gonna go with Tony Hawk's Pro Skater One Plus. I would want Tony Might Hawk well. to win. Yeah, I still haven't played that, but I'll I want to play up. it. And then, next category, we have best sim slash strategy. Best game, I, I definitely have a pick here. Best game focused on real-time or turn-based simulation or strategy gameplay, irrespective of platform. So the nominees are Crusader Kings 3, Desperados 3, Gears Tactics, Microsoft Flight Simulator, Xbox, or it's Xbox, XCOM, Chimera <laughs> Squad. Um, those are the, uh, I'm going to let you go first though, Tyson. I'm going, those are so ones. like I played, uh, XCOM. I love the, I love XCOM too. Played Chimera Squad. It's very, um, I only played like probably a couple hours of it. I want to get back to it eventually, but yeah. it was cool. Um, but I'm going to, my vote, I kind of want XCOM to win because I want more XCOM games, but I'm going with Microsoft Flight Sim. Hmm. That is a great, like, that's what I was considering as well. Um, and in hindsight, oh, man. Because I know a lot of press really like that game. Yeah. But it's like, if if enough of the actual, like, people who should be voting for this category are voting for it, like the RTS and strategy fans, Crusader Kings 3 is going to win. Like, if those people are voting I don't, and I those people on, are like, playing the, the games... Game Pass, I think. Oh, I don't PC know. But Game Pass. I know this as somebody who was watching, um, who just the other day was on Metacritic and looking at like the best games of 2020. That game is like a 93 or 5 or something. And it got like, it's one of the games that got a 10 from IGN this year. Like, it's apparently for people who really like strategy and, and role playing games and stuff like that, really good. <laughs> but, you know, it's just not, doesn't fall in like a lot of people's wheelhouse. Yeah. So it's like, if that does. If the people who do play those games are voting, then I feel like that's going to be it. But I feel like a lot of people aren't going to be those types of people, and yeah. they're going to vote for Flight Sim because I, a lot of people did play Flight Sim. But I'm going to say Crusader Kings 3. Why not? I don't have a horse in this race. Uh, I do plan on playing Gears Tactics. I downloaded it the other day. Yeah, that's on Game Pass um, But I haven't played it yet. Um, let's see. So now we have Best Family. Not even family games, just best, best family. family. It's like uh, best family. The Matthews it's, it's the from family Boy from Meets family World. Family matters. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The Matthews family. Made the same fucking joke. <laughs> the Tanners. Uh, for the, <laughs> the best game. It's the that that's a Raven family. That's what it is. It's Raven. It's the Simone family. It's Raven Simone. Uh, for the best game appropriate for family play, irrespective of genre or platform. Animal Crossing: New Horizon, Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time. Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout, Mario Kart Live Home Circuit, Minecraft Dungeons, Paper Mario The Origami Trail. Uh, King. King. The Origami King. <laughs> this one's super interesting. Origami Trail, like it's like the Oregon Trail. <laughs> well, I feel like there was a game called The Origami Trail. Probably. Am I, am I losing my mind? I think that's why I said that. <laughs> no, I'm curious. But this one's super interesting because Crash 4 got really good reviews and people who played that really liked it and said it was like genuinely a, a really good platformer um the fall guys was huge of course animal crossing giant mario kart live home circuit that's for people if we're talking about like that's a dark genuinely horse. by the genre 
Like that is definitely the dark I hear horse. That was really cool. Minecraft Dungeons and Paper Mario. I don't think. Uh, I don't think this is their year. The I don't know. I don't really know about out of Crash. This that I played is Minecraft Dungeons, and that game is genuinely very good. But uh, I think it's either. Is Fall Guys really a good family game? I don't yeah. know. Like I, AC, I would, so. I would say AC and Mario Kart are the two. I don't think Mario Kart got to enough people. No, I don't think I don't think that's, so either. That's, I'm gonna discount Mario Kart for for me personally. So then I'm going. I don't think enough people going bought it. Animal Crossing: New Horizons. Okay, I'll get that's, that down for you doing. while I consider. I'm doing it because I'm not sure. Um. I feel like this one really... This one's a toss-up. This could be a lot of these. I don't have, like, a definitive which one it really is. But I... Let me scroll up. I want to see what else was Animal Crossing nominated for. Not a ton else. I'm also going to say Animal Crossing. It's a, sa sorry, it's a safe it's choice, but... It's got to be done. But I think... Um, I'm going to say that I want Minecraft Dungeons to win because that game is great, but there's no way it does. I played it for a couple hours. It was it's fun. It's it was all fun. right. It was okay. Uh, let's see. Best fighting. This is definitely not where I'm knowledgeable at all, but not even best fun. fighting game. It's just um, best fighting. Best fighting <laughs> could be so the best game designed primarily around head to head combat. We have Grand Blue Fantasy versus. Oh, yeah. Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate, Street Fighter V Championship Edition, One Punch Man, A Hero Nobody Knows, which I've heard is actually really bad, so that's oh. interesting. Uh, Undernight Inbirth EXE Late Clear is, I believe, how you say all of that. Um, fuck it. I'm going to say Undernight Inbirth. Because so that not seems Mortal like Kombat. the most niche. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not Mortal Kombat, because Mortal so. Kombat is never... There is it there in the fighting community because I always thought that it was more. I don't know mainstream. I know it's not Street Fighter. I would say because okay, and I'm going. That has I'm going problems. Grand Blue Fantasy versus. Good call. Also because that that would that would have been my that second. picture looks dope. And if this was that an RPG, cool if this was an RPG, man, I'd play that. That is really cool art, like a hundred percent. Like you um, could have all those God. characters in your party. God, I'd want that. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to Genshin Impact, which we'll we'll get to uh, soon. All right now, uh, the, in this next category, <laughs> actually, best role playing for the best <clears throat> game designed with rich player character customization and progression, including massively multiplayer experiences. That's an interesting caveat. Um, okay, <sighs> Final Fantasy VII remake, Genshin Impact, Persona Five Royal, Wasteland Three. Yakuza Like a Dragon. I did my best to not go woo after Genshin Impact, but I almost did. <laughs> so it's not Persona, Wasteland, or Yakuza. That's an interest. I think it's very possibly Persona. I don't no. think it's Yakuza or Wasteland. Because I think Persona, didn't Persona win this when it was just Persona 5? Exactly more reason no, as to why they didn't, even could now. They yeah. didn't change that much. They're not going to... It's literally just a remaster with a little bit of extra stuff. Have you played it? Those those Persona fans gonna come after you. I I'm a Persona fan. I I platinumed Persona Five, the original. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is just more. It's a little bit. It has like a couple of new mechanics. It's exactly the yeah. same story. You're not gonna have it win except for the end again. No, I think the end's the same. From what I've heard, is that the it is literally like Persona Five but better. So why would it not win? You know what I mean? If Persona it's not 5 like won, better. It's just there's things you know. in it that are like, oh yeah, that's cool. But it's like the story's the same, and like everything is the same. There's just like, oh, here's an extra character. It's like if when whenever Persona 4 came out, and then you have Persona 4 Golden, like the story's still the same. I don't know. Like that's it's but not. It's, still, it's not gonna. I mean, work. when it comes to um, when it comes to Royal, I mean, they changed up like a lot some of the combat mechanics. Like the game, not really is refined in it. Yeah, they did. They added like baton pass like a lot earlier. Like I, um, I had somebody who played like ten hours of the original and then about thirty of Royal. 
Um, I I've heard more from other people when it comes to that, but I like I did hear that they changed a lot of the combo. of the original. Damn, <laughs> that's a lot. And like a lot maybe of forty of Royal. Royal's good. It's not best role playing game good mm. again. Mm. Like I don't. Uh, I think your logic is flawed because if it won already and this is that, then it's like even more reason for it to win. Why? But also I totally see. That doesn't make any like, sense. It already won. Exactly. So it's it's the same yeah. game, but just two years later. How? Yeah, people are like, fuck it. <laughs> this game's no, great. No, that doesn't make any sense. It's already been proven to be great. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I'm going to guess that it is As a Fantasy VII remake. Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's that as well. Genshin is... is Close. I'm putting that that is what I want, of course, because Genshin is fantastic. It's fantastic, but like, there's oh, there is a little. I'm just trying to think. Okay, with rich player customization and progression. Yeah, but not everyone really goes by that. You know what I mean? Like in an ideal world, they would go by the description, but people just see the game that they like and pick that. A lot. I mean, like you out of these, I mean? out of these five games. The best game is Final Fantasy VII Remake. That is just, that's just, there's no other. It's Tyson fact. That is, no, that is just a fact. That is the Thank fact. You. It is the best game out of those five. Hands down. Mm -hmm. To everyone watching, I haven't played. Any other, any other opinion, you're dead wrong. <laughs> you heard it here first, at T. Pellegrini yeah. on you, Twitter. You totally have it. <laughs> and tell me how right I am. Because <laughs> that's what they'll do. Exactly. <laughs> Anyways, best action adventure. Uh, do you want FF7 to re remake oh, to yeah. win? Is that your preference? I want it to win everything. <laughs> Obviously. Oh my god. Best action adventure for the best action adventure game uh, combining combat with traversal and puzzle solving. And I will say, before I even read off all these games, this is just where I look at all the cover art and I'm just like, this is my genre. Yeah. <laughs> this is the genre I like the most, very clearly. Uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Ghost of Tsushima, Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, uh, since that was cut off last year, sadly, and The Last of Us. Ori's a platformer. I don't, I don't, I don't agree. Yeah. I mean, is there a platformer genre? There usually the used to be. But maybe I not. I think there is. Yeah, it doesn't look like it this time. Yeah. Uh, if there was, then yeah, it would be in there, but... Uh, I guess since it's there's not really one action adventure would they've be the blended possible. platformer into action yeah. adventure. I just realized I hadn't been voting this whole time. I gotta go back and vote for all the ones I want. This one's tough. This one's this one's probably the only tough one right now. Like so far. Yeah. It's not Star Wars, just because. Sadly. Yeah, sadly, it's just great game. Great game. Literally, it was my favorite game of last. Can't year. wait for the sequel. Um, like it, wa watching the hype trailer that Jeff made when. Like footage from that came up, I was like, "Fuck yeah!" <laughs> like yeah. I got so hyped. I want the sequel because like I I like the game, but I want them to refine like a lot of the stuff in it, and it's like I just want that mm. sequel so that it's just it's Jedi Fallen Order but better. Yeah. I gotta keep the pop up preventing me from voting. I gotta keep voting. Like, do. it's not Last of Us. I don't think here. No. no. I don't think an action adventure. Because it doesn't feel like an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> it <laughs> it does. It's just a very sad one. It's a, it's, it's a traumatic adventure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, if I, if Cyberpunk was the like people voting here, for this, is where it's interesting. this is probably where it would win as well. I might have to give it to your game. I think I'm, I think I might as well, even though I don't think that, it's not, I don't know. This, this one's one weird. This is tough because like. I could literally see. Combat and traversal. Any of these, except Star Wars winning. Like I, I, I could actually see any of them winning except Star Wars. And I don't know about, I, I don't know about it. Valhalla. Critics really did like Valhalla though. Like uh, more, like uh, one thing I was listening to i don't think it was the same show but i think it has a higher metacritic than odyssey which is really wild from what i've heard but yeah let me look it up critics really liked it i mean i i like it i, I still find myself 
when I go back to play it, I'm like, oh shit, it's four hours later and I'm still playing it. So it is a great yeah. game. I was just trying to think like I'm misspelling it apparently. For me, it is more of the same like Assassin's Creed. I yeah. just love Assassin's Creed. So for PS5, it has an 85, but on Xbox Series X, it has an 84. On PC, it has an 84. And on Xbox One, it has an 82. It's rigged. And on PS4, it has an 80. Why is it so different across all the platforms? Yeah. <laughs> That's very weird. But yeah, it has an 85 on uh, PS5. Which honestly is like, could be people just riding the hype train of like a new console, yeah. stuff like that. Uh, like new visuals. Um, and Odyssey has an 83. So yeah, people did like it though. <sighs> it's either I am going to say Ghost. I'm gonna fuck it, and that's the one I want, even <sighs> though I have not finished the story, which I really should. I was thinking about that today because I um I moved my because my capture card broke, so I can't stream anything anymore on console. So I moved my um. PS4 and my Switch into my living room. So I was like, I could just sit down and play Ghost here on the couch. Like, I could. I, I don't, I wouldn't have the time to, but I could. <laughs> so I might do that. It's between so. Miles and Ghost for me. Yeah. I could totally see Miles. I'm going to say, small. but the thing is, is that it's a smaller game, Miles yeah, is. It's so it's tough. Smaller. So I'm going to say a Ghost as well, but I want Miles to win. Miles has an 85 on Medic. Yeah. Medic. That's kind of wild. Oh, next um, one's easy. Yeah, and Ghost has an 83. Okay. Uh, and which, what would you want? You would want Valhalla? No, I want Miles. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I want Miles to win. I want them to Jealous make a, a full who has played that game. game of Miles Morales, not uh, like a... Side story. What I've heard, I would really like the length, to be honest. It sounds like perfect. Um, okay. Yeah. Best action is the next one here. For the best game in the action genre, focused primarily on combat. I thought that was best fighting. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, okay. So we have Doom Eternal, Hades, Half-Life Alex, Neo 2, Streets of Rage 4. I'm going to say Hades. Yep, same. That one's easy. And I would want Hades as well, even though I've only played a little bit of yeah. it. Yeah. Doom Eternal, now on Game Pass on PC. So I played Doom Eternal. It's, it's I fun. I do that. Uh, it's good, but ain't no Hades. Ain't no party like a Hades party. Exactly. The Hades party don't stop. Innovation <laughs> accessibility recognizing software and or hardware that's pushing the medium forward by adding features, technology, and content to help games be played and enjoyed by an even wider audience. Awesome fucking category to even exist. Fuck yeah. That's dope. Yeah. And then um, the nominees are Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Grounded, Hyperdot, The Last of Us Part Two, Watch Dogs Legion. There's no way The Last of Us Part Two doesn't win this. Yeah throwing that out there if it didn't i would be the accessibility shocked. options in that game should be in every game going forward from now until eternity and then when and they then started more. when that yeah when that game came out it was everyone was literally like this is this should be a new like industry standard yeah. now like it's uh it's pretty nuts so i'm gonna say that that's what i would want to win there's a lot well. of industry standards that aren't in every games that it just sucks it's just so lame. Yeah? Yeah. Like what? Um, well, like... Oh. I was I waiting for you to be like 60 frames. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> and an FOV slider. <laughs> I thought that's what was coming. That's why I said that. I feel like that should be, yes. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking of one, uh, I think, last night when I was playing Immortals. Did that miss the deadline, or is that just not on here? I think it missed. I wonder. Really? Because hmm. it came out last week. Yeah. And I think yeah, the deadline was when, was when Cyberpunk, like, Damn. was supposed to come out in November. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, okay. So we have uh, best. What do you, if you think of what it was, let me know. Yeah, I will. 
The now we have best VR slash AR for the best game experience playable in virtual or augmented reality, irrespective of the platform. I do not have a horse in this race because I have not played any of them. Maybe. Dreams, Half Life, Alex, Marvel's Iron Man VR, Star Wars Squadron, The Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners. I going to guess Half Life, Alex. That's a good. That's a good uh, horse to back. I'm gonna go with Star Wars. Because I heard a lot of things about that game when it first came out. Yeah. Um, that was pretty cool in VR. Okay. Now we have best community support, recognizing a game for outstanding community support, transparency, and responsiveness, inclusive of social media activity and game updates slash patches, which I just want to remind everyone that Destiny 2 won last year. Shout out to Destiny 2. Um, we have Apex Legends. Destiny 2, uh, Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout, Fortnite, No Man's Sky, and Valorant. Can I just say, can they update the, the thumbnail for Destiny 2? It's still us just holding Cade. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I was listening to, uh, like, you know. He's been dead for two in, years. <laughs> yeah, in one of, the, one of the games cast I was listening to, uh, I think it was literally about this category. Blessing's like, oh, I mean, what what came out this last year? Forsaken, right? Didn't Forsaken? And Ron's like, yeah, yeah, Forsaken. I'm like, guys, that was like two years ago. <laughs> like, to be uh, fair, uh, Shadowkeep is very forgettable. But just put the <laughs> just put the traveler on there. Like, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> we have he, other. Like, put the OG there's Destiny other key logo, art dude. Do it. that's you better won't. than us holding Cade's dead body as we walk away. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, come it's on. Kinda sad. I'm going to say I feel like this could go to anyone here. Yeah. Like legit, I think people vote. No Man's Sky this. had a huge We're update this year as well, place. too. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think people are going to vote all over the place for this one. Like I think this is just going to be split. There's no like clear. So it's, it's going to be, be a better. very close race. I'll say Fortnite, fuck it, why not? It's Destiny two won last year. I'm gonna say, Fortnite. I'm gonna say Destiny two. It's fair. Still, still Destiny two. Like I was thinking, I'm really going for too. their like the the small print under the category because it's like inclusive mm -hmm. of social media activity and game updates patches. Like I don't think there's, well, I'm not really in like some of the other communities, but like when you have like Deej and and damage and and uh cosmo for the the community team like i just don't think that there's that many people or i mean i just don't know if there are yeah those standout people just, for like fall guys though, for fortnite i only know of those people though because i play destiny you know what i mean like, that's what i'm th like i don't know how many is there know. like the one is there like the community support guy for or girl well, I mean, for apex fall guys Fall Guys social media was huge just last year. I mean, part of the whole That's Tim true. thing was because of them, like, coming back at him. They're, yeah, they're so, really good at their social media. So yeah. that's a, so I, I was thinking about that, but I don't know. I'm saying Destiny 2, and I want Destiny 2 to win, just so that it's still in, in the game awards in some aspect. Because I don't know if it'll ever yeah. win somewhere else. Unless it gets, like, a huge, huge overhaul. Yeah. Best mobile game. For the best game playable on a mobile device. Among Us, Call of Duty Mobile, Genshin Impact, Legends of Runeterra, <laughs> shout the fuck out, <laughs> Pokemon Cafe Mix, and, um, and that's it. Also, what a weird image for Runeterra. Like, what a fucking weird... That's literally, like, one character doing it weird. Um, yeah, they're not good at their yeah. key art, picking, picking their no, thumbnails. No, it's very odd. It's very odd. Um, I'm going to say... Call of Duty Mobile won last year, by the way. Um, I could totally see it being Among Us. It's either Among Us or Genshin. Yeah, it's either Among Us or Genshin. You know what? Just because I want it to be, I'm going to say Genshin. But then I'm also going to put Legends of Runeterra is what I really <laughs> want, but like that's not going to win. It has a good player base, though. Like People like it. I'm gonna say it's not like Warcraft where I'm completely alone that has a 28% on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm gonna say yeah, I'm gonna say Among Us as well. Okay. Well, I said I said Genshin, so. Oh, but you okay? Good. 
Yeah. I want I, totally I want among us. Being among us though. Yeah. You want it to be among us as yeah. well. Yeah. Okay. I've fallen off the Genshin uh wagon. Yeah, but like it's like, still fantastic. It's still fantastic. I played a lot of it like, this year. I played a, I played way too much of that game. Didn't yeah, spend a dime. Mean, so like, Didn't spend a yeah. dime. I actually but. bought the battle pass one time and that was it. Uh, let's see. Okay, best indie for outstanding creative and technical achievement in a game made outside the traditional publisher system. Carry on, Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout, Hades, Spelunky 2, Spirit Fair. This is where I feel I still think it's going to be Hades. Yeah, that's fair. I'm going to say Spirit Fair. I want to play that. I have it downloaded. I've only played a little bit of it, but it is really good from what I have played. I'm going to say Hades. You're going to say Hades? Yeah. Okay. going to vote for Spirit Fair while I'm here. Okay. Best Ongoing. Awarded to... God, they really have to finish. Outstanding. Best Ongoing what? Game. Please. It's so... <laughs> <laughs> like, you're not best that cool. Ongoing. Where it's just like... Hey, man. Best... It's implied... <laughs> To be fair, like I, I get it. It is implied. It's the game awards, you know. What else? I you guess, do, you do but it it's for? just like, it feels weird it's to say like best ongoing, best ongoing what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just finish it. Uh, okay, awarded to a game for outstanding development of ongoing content that evolves the player experience over time. We have Apex Legends, Destiny Two, Call of Duty Warzone, Fortnite, No Man's Sky. I could see Warzone getting it here because Warzone has had a really, like, big year. Um, I could see any of these. Yeah, I'm not in the Warzone uh, ecosystem, so I don't know how how big that is. People really like it, and it has definitely grown and, like, to the point where, you know, Black Ops Cold War came out this year and they didn't replace the BR. They're just like, Warzone's still the BR for the next year, which is kind of huge when it comes to like how call of duty operates um i'm gonna say it just because why not i feel like any of these couldn't happen here i'll say warzone might as well i'm I'm gonna gonna say no man's sky because i got into no man's sky like crazy this year yeah and it is so cool what they've like how much they've done with that game since it first came out so I'm going to see No Man's Sky, but I want, again, Destiny 2 to win. Of course. We out here. Ball boys for life, you know what I mean? Exactly. Uh, now we have Games for Impact. Uh, for <clears throat> a thought-provoking game with a pro-social meaning or message. Uh, if found, Kentucky Route Zero TV edition. Spirit Fair, tell me why, through the darkest of times. The caption is very weird because it's like for a pro, with a pro social meaning or message. That one's interesting. Yeah. Because Spirit Fair is definitely not like a super pro social message because it's, I mean, it's about death. I think it's just like a. Um, hey, I don't know. The wording on that seems a little weird. Little interesting. Yeah. I'm going to go with Tell Me Why. I haven't played any okay. of these games, so I don't. I, I this is kind of like a throwaway. I'm only going for "Tell yeah. Me Why" because whenever I hear it, people talk about "Tell Me Why." It makes me think of the Backstreet Boys song. Tell me why. <laughs> nothing but so that is exact. That's the acclaimed. only reason I'm voting for it. Tell me. I definitely, why. I definitely really? want to play "Tell Me Why" and "Spirit Fair." I haven't heard of the other ones. So. I have both of them downloaded. Um, I have heard of Kentucky Route Zero, but not a lot. Um, Kentucky okay. Route Zero Best sounds like a, a chicken, a chicken joint. That's that's Kentucky Fried Chicken. No, I know, but I'm like, I, I, oh, I let's get some. Something from let's there the pick other me day. up, pick me up a bucket from Kentucky Route Zero. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it works. <laughs> it works. You're not wrong, dude. Um, okay, so best performance. I wait, wait, who, what did you pick? White. Uh, I picked Spirit Bear. Spirit Bear. Okay. I'm gonna pick Spirit Bear okay. again. Um, Best performance, I have quite an opinion here that of who I want to win, but who I think is going to be win is, is going to be interesting. Hmm. Uh, Ashley Johnson as Ellie in The Last of Us. Uh, Laura Bailey as Abby in The Last of Us. Um, Daisukai Suji as Jin Sakai in Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, Logan Cunningham as Hades in Hades, which 
Apparently, he voices like a ton of characters in that game too, mm-hmm. so it's not just Hades. Um, Najee Jeter as Miles Morales in Marvel's, Marvel's Spider-Man. Miles Morales. I want it to be Ashley very badly. Ashley Johnson. There is one specific scene in The Last of Us Part Two where I was like, holy fuck. This is the best acting I've literally seen in years. Like, it was incredible. But I don't know if she's going to get it. But this one's also kind of a toss-up. I, I, don't, really? I don't know who they would for me, For me, it's a clear, clear win. Well, maybe not a clear winner, but, like, it's clear who I am voting for and who I want to win. I'm going to guess that it's Laura. Yeah. Everyone on the games cast said that too. And I was like, really? Like, I don't, I didn't think Abby's performance was honestly that amazing. Like it was good. It was obviously like, that's such an understatement because it's obviously great. It's Laura Bailey. Like it's naughty dog. Like it was obviously really good, but like it was definitely not the standout performance in that game to me. Like, I think it was, I think like Troy did a lot better. I, maybe they had more to work with, but I don't know. Like, I guess cause I, I still, I don't know what it was with Abby, but Abby just felt and like the more the more that I've thought about The Last of Us Part Two, the more I've like my my opinions and, and thoughts about it always like are very fluid. And I go through a lot of different thoughts <clears throat> about the game. But like when I first played it, and then you spoiler well, I don't know should we say this spoilers you play as like mm, her? Not- not sure. I mean, people, people, oh there's a game awards. Everybody's played these games. <laughs> um, if you haven't. You play as her. The next two minutes. And like I, after, after the game <laughs> ended, I was like, man, I really like, I didn't like my time playing as Abby. And then like the more and more I thought about it, the more that changed because I like my opinions of Abby changed and like thinking about everything that she went through, like, cha- like, changed my mind and changed my opinion. And then it also changed my opinion on like how she acted and the performance that Laura gave, because before I was, I was closed off. I was like, I don't like you. I'm not really going to pay much attention to you. But then the more and more that I thought about Fuck it, off, yeah, you know what I mean? the more and more that I thought about it, the more I was like, I, 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 re- I not, not really related, but like I understood. And then I like appreciated like the, the stuff that she went through and like, yeah, I just, yeah, and that's totally fair, but I feel like that's more writing and and game design than than performance. Like, and that's not again not to say that she was bad. There was just no moment where I was like, "Holy fuck, that performance." Whereas with both Troy and Ashley, I had at least one of those moments for each of them. Where whereas with Laura, there was no like, "Holy fuck, um, that scene." But like, there were definitely. It's not to say that she was not good because she was incredible. Yeah. Like she did do a very good job, but uh, I don't know. I I'm gonna choose Ashley because why not? I don't really. I, Laura's probably gonna win, from what I've heard with you and literally everyone in the game cast. <laughs> At this point, I feel like everybody's unanimously was uh, with Laura, but I'm gonna say Ashley. Why not? And then uh, best audio design, recognizing the best in-game audio and sound design. Doom Eternal, Half-Life Alex, Ghost of Tsushima, Resident Evil 3, and then The Last of Us. Very weird that Resident Evil's in there. Yeah. I didn't think of it Wild when... I think that that was this year. Yeah. It was a good game. That's another short game that you could play. Probably like around 10 I'm, hours. I'm not. It's a fun game. I'm never playing that. No? It's a horror game. It's a hard pass. Oh, it's a great... It's Too a great, spooky. It's more action. And 3 is definitely more action than 2. But there's a lot of like yeah. jump scares then. Yeah, no. <laughs> Hard pass on the jump scares. Um, I'm gonna say Last of Us. Yeah, same. When I when I, when reading those like the the nominees and then thinking about audio design, and I would think about like the the I forget what they're called. This like I guess the scars. Or, yeah, the yeah, ones that whistled. Uh, the, the whistling. Like, that shit Sarah was fights, yeah. so intense. And even just, like, reloading guns and just, yeah, everything everything about that audio was amazing. My dog just yawned if anyone heard that. Um, yeah, I'm going to say Last of Us Part 2 as well. 
Okay, let's see. Best score and music. For outstanding music, inclusive of score, original song, and or licensed soundtrack. Um, Doom Eternal, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Hades, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, The Last of Us Part Two. This one... I don't remember there's as much of a score in The Last of Us. Just like oh, the... see, I definitely do. I mean, overall, even just licensed soundtrack, the music is kind of a backbone of the whole narrative theme of that game. Like... Yeah. I could I could totally see that. There's a couple but, yeah, I guess there's a couple songs that like when Joel sings and stuff. It's the whole it's the whole through line is yeah. that that one song. Um I want Hades though. That's what I want to win. Literally from like an hour of playtime in that game because that music is When you're playing so or you're good. going with Last of Us? Um No. <laughs> uh I Sure, sure. Why not? Why not? Solid, you know, solid well. choice. Yeah. And then I'll I'll say that I want Hades. I'm a hundred hundred percent going for Final Fantasy VII remake. Oh, my dog will lead down. Uh, okay. And that's what you would want as oh, well. Oh yeah, hundred percent. To take those songs that we heard. 20 some years ago and like make them new and not just make it like a, an orchestrated version of it is just amazing. Yeah. Okay. Let's do, oh, I voted for the wrong one. I just voted for last of us one. I wanted to vote for Hades. Oh, well. Um, my point zero, 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 one. Watch, now it's going to, now it's going to count and you're going to be like, oh shit. Damn. Damn. That, that's all it took. Uh, okay, best art direction. We have for outstanding creative and or technical achievement mm. in artistic design and animation. Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost of Tsushima, Hades, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, and The Last of Us Part Two. I feel like Ori might get it here. It's either... There's anywhere for Ori. I was going to say either Ori or Ghost, because like art direction... Because oh, yeah. of like the the photo mode, especially in Ghost, there was a lot of that going around when it came out. I remember, and like that game is very beautiful, even though I'm not a mm -hmm. huge fan of it narratively and uh, mechanically, <laughs> which is literally <laughs> the two aspects of a game: <laughs> it's narrative and mechanics. You're the only one, Tyson. <laughs> no, I'm not. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of people that have beat that game. That doesn't mean anything. That literally are does you, not mean anything. Are you, are you, that does are not you mean, high. That's like when you <laughs> ask me, you're <laughs> like, you're like, oh, did you beat the game? I'm like, no, but name a game I beat this year. <laughs> Other than the last one. But like, <laughs> like if the completion rate of a game is low, to me, that's not a good game. No, absolutely yes. not. Yes. Oh my Especially god, the completion rate of like most games is low. <laughs> like no. most people don't finish video games. Absolutely, no. the completion rate for literally no seriously, this is an actual stat. Like the completion rate for most video games that come out is low. The fact that the last one well, had a that's really not a high stat. That's just that's state. just words. What's the it's actual stat? Oh, I mean, I can I exactly. Get it I can get it for you, but no, that's a that's a real thing. Like Last of Us is mm -hmm. Last of Us Part Two was well, like, that's a, that's a very that's I think a very uh, different because people like hated that game because they like because of that big thing. In the beginning. Well, I'm saying people, most people, like uh, more people than usual, beat that game. Like that game has a weirdly high percentage of completion, and it's like 25 percent or something like that. And that's massive in comparison to most games. Like, you can find it just by looking at the, like, if I had my PS4 in here, I'd turn it on and I'd look. You could go to your Horizon, like, trophy list and look at the stat for, like, the final trophy for beating the final mission. 38.2%. And it's really low. What? To me, like, Ghost of Tsushima, 38.2%. Have finished the that's game. pretty that's pretty hot that's, that's not high, high. For games, i'm telling you dude no seriously compare that to other games i'm i'm not joking like that is high that is a high percentage like last of us i'm curious what last of us was but like 
it's not that high, and it is high in comparison to most games. Like, I'm, I'm telling you, most people don't beat video games, dude. You're like, you, like most people have lives and they, they finish. Like most casual people, just like don't pick it back up. You know. So, but that's the and thing. They, it's they like about their lives. the people. But I'm talking about like gamers. Sure, but that's I'm not, not talking about the goddamn that norms. Necessarily know. <laughs> that are like, oh, is there a new Star Wars game? Oh, I'll pick up Battlefront too. I'm not talking yeah, about but them. Like that's not something that we necessarily know. It's not a. But the thing is, is when them. I talk to when when the the people in in like our circles, if none of them have finished this game, to me that's not a good game. Well, that's such a binary. Like that's so limiting. No. There's so many other factors than that. Like, I don't. That's not a. That's not a no. way to judge a game at yes. all. If you like a game, that's a hot take. if you like a game, like so much, a Tyson hot take. No, dude, why? Why would you? That doesn't make any sense. If you like this game, you're like, oh my god, this is the best game ever. But I'm not gonna finish it. Just saying, it's a it's a hot take. That's that's so take, like, dog. it's it's like with Final Fantasy VII remake. I love that game so much. It is my personal game of the year. I've beaten it twice, and I already want to play it again. I mean, that's just uh, that's a that's a that's an anomaly. <laughs> no, it's not for people who platinum. Dude, games. I can name on one hand the 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 amount of games that I've beaten twice. Like one hand, maybe. It's, it's like, like with Odyssey. Three. I played that game twice <laughs> to completion. That's. Insane. I've played Final <laughs> Fantasy X, like, I don't know, probably over 10 times to completion. Yeah. I mean, that, I, I'm telling you, you're. But isn't an when people don't like games, they outlier. stop playing them? Yeah, but they also stop playing them for other reasons. Like, it's not just. That's such a binary limited. But they don't it's go in. They're just like. That oh, one reason. Yes, but it's, it's a pretty big indicator that a game is not that great. To not pull you back in. You to can finish say it. that it's an indicator. I will agree that it is that it can absolutely be an indicator. But just because a lot of people didn't finish it doesn't mean it's a bad game. Well, when like, I if don't, none I don't of our know. if none of the people in our circles have finished the finished this one game, then to me that is a bad game. Which I I do know of at least <laughs> two people who've beaten it. I don't know of like the amount of people who have started and not finished. Like, I don't really... I know my friend Andrew has played it and beaten it. No, Eric. Not one Eric, but a different Eric. <laughs> I know Eric, he beat it. Eric number two. But I don't really know who else played it. I know that I played it. Um, I remember a lot of people playing it when it first came out. A lot of people did. I have no idea. A lot of people played it. I played it. I got to, I'm like, the third you, act, and I was like, it has this is still just more... It is, it is a highly rated game. It is, like I said... Insane. The the narrative and the mechanics I could do without. Just give me that. Just give me the photo mode. That's that's a good game right there. Oh my God, <laughs> I'm trying to find the uh, the stat for like. I was trying to look at literally any game and like find the trophy that is like complete the game and l look it up on psnprofiles.org or whatever the fuck. But I can't find what the trophy is for like complete the game. <laughs> like I'm trying to look on Horizon and they're all like, you know, kill these machines. <laughs> I'm like, fuck, just show me the final one. <laughs> but oh well. All right, let's see. Let's I stand by. I stand by my hot take of Ghost of <laughs> Tsushima. People think it's, 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 people are, I don't know how to say this. It's a, it's an okay game. It was very bloated and the mechanics are not that great. That is what I will say as a hot take and you're in the minority on that. I, I have heard from other people that's bloated and that, well, not even really. I've heard from other people that it's the narrative a little is bigger boring than they like. I've never heard the bloating. I've not heard that from a single person. Everyone that I know that's played this game really likes the narrative. All of the all of the and extra definitely stories. The mechanics really like all the of the mechanics. extra the stories. Mechanics is the one cool. thing where I'm like that. I don't. But the story of just like oh, here's this one bad guy that like then he's gonna. 
you you almost get to him and then oh he's like oh no i'm not gonna i'm I'm the main bad guy then you see him again in the middle of the story then you're like then he backs up he backs up north of the map and i'm just like oh my god that it's so this is not surprising as somebody who hasn't even gotten there i'm like this is kind of what i expect exactly that is not that's just late not lazy it's just like it's predictable it's boring it's just like i don't it's just vanilla sure and so, sure. and I just, that's why I do not like the narrative. It's just very play by play. Oh, uh, main character loses person close to him. Okay. Well then, then that reignites fire under, under main character. So now he, now he has a burning desire to kill a villain. It's very like hero's journey. And I just don't. Dope. Sounds good to me. <laughs> I, I can't comment on that though. But the, the, the main thing that always weirds me out is when you're like mechanics. That's the only that I'm like I've I've heard no one else complain about because I played Sekiro Other than like last year. Say that they wish they had a lock on button. That's it. <laughs> oh yeah, that too. It's the closest. Oh, there you go. Been. Accessibility. That that sprung this whole and it came full circle is that you can't change the buttons on Ghost of Tsushima. That's such a stupid complaint. What? Most no. games on console you can't change the buttons. Most games on console, you can't change buttons. No, but that should be... It's an- just a thing. No, but don't you think that should be an accessibility... Sure. So that's... Yeah. But, like, it's not exclusive to Ghost. It's not, but, like... Like, at all. Now, the industry... Like, a, a lot of industry standard games... I don't even know if you can do that in Last of Us. I don't think you can rebind. Yeah, you can... You can. Well, you can... The shoulder buttons. I think you can change certain things. Like, yeah, I think you can swap, like, shoulder... And but like I'm the saying, bumpers. the industry like, standard now rebind. has shifted, and I don't, I don't know if it's Souls games that it's have. Not. Yes, it has. It should, but it absolutely has no. Has not. shifted to the, name has me shifted, a game on console that you can rebind. I'm not saying rebinding. I'm saying has the industry standard is is shifting the the what is it the shoulder buttons to attack and like heavy attack or whatever. Oh sure, but that's such a what sure. Sure. And so you have this one game. I mean, that's not the. It's not always the case. I I don't think that that is necessarily an industry standard yet. Mm. Like, Odyssey does it, and that's like Souls what, does R1? it. Phoenix Rising does I'm it. Trying to think of other like what are other Horizon Horizon is for the ma- for the range you know it's L two R two. But you don't really melee. Yeah, you don't really melee in that much. I'm trying to much. think. What is the spear button in that game? I don't. It is. Know. It is square. I think it might be R1. No. Is it square? Yeah. Or. I think it might be square. I can't remember. I don't know. I I agree that I technically prefer the shoulder button, but like I don't think it's an industry standard yet, and I don't think it's necessarily. I think, it, I think a, a huge deal. In in those kinds of games, it is. Cause like even in like Mortal Shell, I'm pretty sure that's the the combo there. The only the only uh, one that doesn't do it is Devil May Cry, but Devil May Cry has combos, so I don't really know how. It's almost like a fighting game, where it's like that is a little bit. It's a little bit different than just like your main action game. I don't know, but yeah, the the lock on not being able to change your uh, your attack buttons. Those are my big issues with Ghosts. And then they're like, oh, no, but here's fair, here's man. a multiplayer instead. That's very good and genuinely the best multiplayer experience I've had all year. But, you know, that's fine. Best art direction. What are we going to choose for this? I'm choosing Hades. Hades? Okay. I'm going to choose Ori. And... Ori's a good game. I'm going to... I'm gonna. I'll say that I want Ghost to win. Yeah. Oh. Then the next. Do you have one that you would want here? Mm, no, Final I think. Fantasy. Well, I guess Final Fantasy, but I don't think it's gonna win for Art Direction. Yeah, that's like not the. Not the category where it would. Um, next one is best narrative is for outstanding storytelling and narrative development in a game. 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost of Tsushima, Hades, The Last of Us Part Two. This is an interesting one. It's, it's still I, Last of Us for me. Uh, 
it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, probably because this is mostly critics who are voting on this, but like even a lot of, uh, I know some critics still were in that divisive camp, but I don't, I don't think it was the majority of them. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> I mean, narratively, out of all these games, well, I've played four of them. The narrative, I guess, to me, doesn't really feel like it's that um, forefront in Hades. It's almost like how there's lore and destiny. Uh, how it's like... I I don't know. Even from what I've heard of people who have, like, beaten the... Or who have, like, completed, cleared a run or whatever, you know, gotten all the way out. And even from the little bit that I've played... The, the main compliment that Hades gets is the fact that it is a roguelite or like or whatever, and it is like you are going through and doing runs and getting better and going further and further each time, but in most roguelites, there's not really much of a story, whereas yeah. in this, you, you are changing the world as you go in. Like, characters do say new things to you when you... Like, the, the story is... Not all, it's like completely ingrained in the gameplay loop in that game, which is super fascinating. Yeah. So I think this could get narrative when it comes to that based on not just the quality of the narrative, but how it's formatted. You know what I mean? The structure of the narrative in Haiti is really impressive. That makes sense. Yeah, I still just feel that like it's... But I'm going to say Last of Us. It's, yeah, it's Last It's Last of Us, 100%. <laughs> um, I would want Final Fantasy, I, obviously, to win... My God, it's the best game of the year. It is. I cannot confirm nor deny. It's a game that I've beaten twice, and I already want to play in the same year. And I don't think there's many games like that out there. And it's not a short game either. Like Last of Us is such an interesting thing because of all of the fucking like controversy of it this year. You know what I mean? I just don't. It's weird. But yeah, most of that was not with the critics. So I'm I'm going to yeah. It's last of us, I'll say it. Even if it was even if it was with the critics, like the controversy almost makes it it's it's the um Red Dead Redemption 2 of this year where it's like it is a divisive game which makes it one of the best games. Yeah, but it was like real divisive. <laughs> Like, yeah. it was real bad. Like, it was not a good discussion. Well, you have, like, the angry the angry gamer boys who are just like, oh, women in my video games. <laughs> give me my Strong boob. Woman. Give me my boob armor. <laughs> like, <laughs> those, yes. we don't even talk about those because their opinions don't matter. I'm sorry. They don't. Because it's not, yeah. an, it's not an educated opinion. It's just a wham. I want we things like I want. We were earlier this year. Yeah. But, like, when there is, like, actual critical divisiveness, I feel that that is indicative of a very good piece of art, especially in, like, yeah. in games and movies. When something is very divisive, it means that it makes you think a lot. Red yeah. Dead Redemption yeah. was a little I bit mean, divisive for different reasons, but... Yeah. The controversy behind that game was very... Different. <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like Cyberpunk's going to be very divisive as well. I... Maybe. I don't know. The game's going to be interesting. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Next one is Best Game Direction, awarded for outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction and design. Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost of Tsushima, Hades, Half-Life Alex, Last of Us. I want to give this... To Last of Us, game direction. Game direction. I feel like that's very clearly Naughty Dog. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and what they did with the narrative is very like the it's controversy tough, yeah. behind that game. To tie it back into what we were just talking about is based on the narrative design. Yeah. It is based on the the design and the direction that was given for that game, structure wise. Like, and the people who really like it. That bold and and like interesting and different structure is why it worked yeah. for the people who really liked it. So I I'm I'm gonna say last one. Like I I liked it, 
like months after playing it, while I was playing it, I feel like there were, this is just a length issue where it was like both, both, uh, sort of parts took a little too long. It could have shaved off like, I don't know, five hours of each. Yeah. There was a little, little too much. Like, I don't know if it was just, um, traversal or just what they could shave off. But like, I liked that, uh, duality of this game because yeah, you you just see how morally gray everything is, because like in the first game you have Joel who's bad, but then you have Ellie who's like innocent, which a lot of people didn't see as bad until the or, end. I meant as so, good. I meant as good. Yeah, yeah. I was about to say, <laughs> but like, I was like, yeah, Joel's so, bad like at the end. But yeah, like so he makes like a a, a morally gray decision, and that almost kind of sparks the the fire of like this morally gray like universe of last of us because the all of last of us 2 is just morally gray everybody is justifiable in their own mind which makes them all heroes and villains and i feel like that's a like that's but yeah like what were you saying about how the narrative is kind of entwined with the direction it's kind of kind of goes hand in hand so yeah i'll i was gonna go with hades as well, because you were talking about how the narrative yeah. kind of changes the world as well. Hades is also a good pick. But I'll go, uh, you know what? No, fuck it. I'm going to go last, or I'm going to go Hades. Okay. Um, that leaves the big shebang. <laughs> I love like my game of the two year. Two hours this. into this or however long. Let's see. That leaves the big boy game of the year. I think Recognizing it's a clear a game winner. that delivers the absolute best experience across all creative and technical fields. Doom Eternal, which is the one that surprises me, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost of Tsushima, Hades, Animal Crossing New Horizons, and Last of Us Part Two. Most of these nominations were not surprising. The Doom Eternal one was a little like, really? Because I know it didn't get as great of reviews as people wanted it to yeah. when it first came out. Especially because it's, it's, yeah, it's, an, it's a sequel, so you would think that you would want it to be... I mean, it is sort of... It's technically... Actually, it has a really good Metacritic. It's technically honest, like, really. better than the first, but narratively, I don't know. It's, it's a I've fun game. I've heard a couple people that didn't like it as much as the first one. You know? Yeah. This one's interesting. Interesting, but there's a clear winner. Is there? Yeah. What's that? The clear winner of Game of the Year 2020 from the Game Awards is <laughs> <laughs> Animal Crossing New Horizons. Wow, okay. That okay. game is has reached it's it's the reached like wow. well, I don't know if it's reached the Fortnite levels, but like it's reached the levels of like non-gamers asking questions about this this game where you're on an island and and I remember people from work like asking me like oh have you heard of this like animal crossing game this game has and I, and it's obviously because of the pandemic that like it's really i wonder what this game would have been like if we weren't in like a global pandemic when it came out <laughs> yeah but yeah it's it's uh animal crossing wow interesting i i feel weird because looking back at this list i've given so many predictions to the last of us part <laughs> <laughs> but like like, way more than I thought I would. Um, but I don't... I might say it again. I, I, I think it's between those two. Um, I just... I don't know. I wish Final Fantasy would win. Man, so badly, but... It's tough competition. Definitely putting that in your preferred. Yeah. It's very <laughs> tough competition... And, like, I'm just thinking about, like, Impact and people still playing it today. See, what's interesting is that Game of the Year, people usually vote for, like, what was the Game of the Year? What was the zeitgeist, like, in the conversation, <laughs> you know? But it says, recognize a game that delivers the absolute best experience across all creative and technical fields. It's yeah. not what that is. Like, and like, I know people don't always follow that, but still... Remember Overwatch won it one year because that was just like yeah. the the flavor of the year. That's what they should call it because <laughs> it's not like the best flavor of the it's year. It's not the best like technically and narratively game. 
It's the best game that is talked about by gamers and it has reached the the facets of the industry whereas where people outside of the industry are talking about this game like Fortnite. What did Fortnite ever win? Game of the year? I don't think game of the year, no. Well, maybe. I don't know. I don't know because it's never really real it never got released. <laughs> yeah. It was always in beta forever. Hmm. I'll I'll say Last of Us to be different. I really I mean, don't a good have a strong feeling one way or the other as to what is going to win when it comes to predictions. Like, I really could see it being either of those two. Yeah. Um, honestly, it could be. Uh, no, I don't know. I think it's it's gonna be one of those two, and I think. That the last was part two is what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna say. <laughs> gonna vote for Ghost of Tsushima. But, you know, not gonna win. That's all my votes. I voted for everyone. All in there. Oh God. I'm I'm liking. My Discord crashed. I'm liking these. these oh no. My my Discord just crashed. Am I back? I don't think. Oh no. Hello. You were. Uh, you were grayed out for uh, for a second. My Discord just totally crashed. Like, is it? Am I back? Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Well. <laughs> that was weird because you okay. just stayed on the call too. Yeah. Yeah. It just shut down. It gave me like a Windows notification about something. About storage space, which I don't know why I would need. To, I have three terabytes free. I don't know what is going on there. But I guess we should wrap it up since that's my good. storage space is... You know, that's, is, that's uh, fate right there. <laughs> run it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. But, yeah, so these are the Game of the Year predictions. Tyson, I'm willing right now to make a pizza bet <laughs> with you about this because I always like making pizza bets oh, and no one will pizza. ever make them with me. If you win... I don't even know how we I do will, this because we can't, like, call win, a pizza place and we'll just have to PayPal yeah. each other. <laughs> oh, maybe, yeah. <laughs> but what if you win? I I mean I'm sure it could work. I could call. I could order it's, it online from a place in Canada, right? Like maybe I don't know. I think so. We'll you figure. I, that's that's a future yeah. Teddy and Tyson's problem. But we're, we'll figure it out. If you win, you have to send me pizza. If I win, I have to send you pizza or Fine. or food of your choice if you want. Well, but well, I'll, I'll say you pizza. want your pizza bed. I will give you a pizza bed. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Now I'm, now I got shit riding on it. I better not have fucked up on these esports picks. You oh know man, I mean? <laughs> those esports picks are gonna give me my they're pizza. They're gonna be the dude. They're gonna be the the make or break. Yeah, <laughs> which is really sad. But anyways, this was Tyson and Teddy talk episode one. Uh, normally they're not gonna be this long, but uh, you know, <laughs> it's a it's, we're, we're, we it's got the game first awards. episode, and then it's the game awards. That's a good time yeah. to be a long episode. Also, what yeah, if we tie? Absolutely. That's a good question. Then we just roll it over. Win? We just roll it over to the next bet so that it's two pieces. Yes, yeah. <laughs> we have to just find a something else to bet on. Yeah, that's fine. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. If you're not watching or listening on this, you can go to Tyson and Teddy Talk on YouTube. There's a channel, um, and this will be there. So also be on my YouTube channel, but it'll be there if you want all of the content with just us two. Um, it'll all be in one place. It's in its own RSS feed. You can find me on Twitter at Teddy Chineris and Twitch at Teddy Chineris as well. Uh, Instagram, trying to think anything else, probably not. Uh, just, you know, find me out in the streets. You know? Oh, don't find out in the streets. Stay home. Wear your masks oh, and right. stay home. Right. Yeah. Don't catch me in the streets. <laughs> We're at home. Yeah, don't catch so you at like, home. That's, just that's just catch worse. me on the internet. Yeah, uh, that's much worse. You can find me at Tyson Pellegrini on Twitter. Uh, T. No, yeah, T Pellegrini on Twitch and Instagram Pellegrini underscore 17. Or no, I think I'm just Pellegrini 7. I don't know. I barely even post on Instagram. I got to get better at that one day in the future. Not <laughs> not today. Uh, today's not that day. You use the stories a lot. I used to. I might do a top 10 or maybe I, might, I should do a top 20 songs of 2020. That's very, I like yeah. it. It's very, yeah. uh, what is it? I don't know. Just very fitting. 20 songs. Yeah. 2020. 2020. There you go. So I might do there that on Instagram. I don't know. We'll see. But 
All Catch right. me on Twitch. That's where I'm going to be trying to stream more as well. There you go. There you go. Look at this man. He's out there. He's out there doing things. I'm trying. Just like we'll be out here doing things next week. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, smash that bell, you know? <laughs> <laughs> what is the Smash that bell. <laughs> <laughs> You're about to Remember that? Office. Remember that? Yeah, that's what he would always do. And he's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> what, what did he say? He said something. Uh, uh, we're talking about him like he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> still there. Uh, <laughs> gone too soon. Gone breakfast. too soon, young, <laughs> young Rest in peace, beauty, bud. Rest in peace, guys. All right, y'all have All a right. good one. Bye. <laughs> peace.